Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay, and today in this long-term, highly detailed review, I will be covering whether or not the new full suspension trail-rated Polygon Siskiyou T6e is worth 3600 US. When it comes to a 45-year-old dude wanting to have the most fun possible in the limited time I have available for riding these days. You know the deal, kids, full-time job, and of course all this YouTube stuff I do. It only really leaves me like one or two hours here and there to go riding, so e-bike. So Bikes Online was kind enough to let me borrow this bike for review since my Polygon T8 review did so well over the past few years. By the way, the T8 is still one of the best value mountain bikes available today, in my opinion. Again, it's just my opinion. Bang for the buck, incredible bike still today. Now, I spent the past few months testing the T6e in various conditions, including, you know, more laid back rail trails, which I love to ride with my kids, the streets, and of course, the best mountain bike trails in my area. So in case you are unaware, e-bikes are battery and motor assisted, which makes riding way easier and let's face it, potentially way more fun as well. However, it does come at the cost of extra weight and literally the cost of the battery, the motor and the electronics, you know, that control everything. So they do cost more. So the T6e showed up in a large box with minimal packaging and assembly required. Since my T6e is a loner, from Bikes Online. It was actually pre-assembled a little bit more than my T8 was uh, just coming out of the box. So with that being said, you still, you know, you just have to put the front tire on, you have to mount the handlebars, and, and then after that, the, my seat was already in, the dropper post was already in, you might have to put that in. But other than that, you just have to then adjust, you know, the angles of your brakes and things like that. The height of the handlebars, for example, which I actually did lower a little bit here. Now it's very easy to assemble this bike. It only requires a few Allen keys. Now fully assembled, this is what the T6e looks like out of the box. So let me just go over some of the basic specs on the T6e for those interested and then we'll move on to how I have the bike set up and then of course my overall experience with the bike itself. So again, $3,600 is the retail price but at the time of this review it's actually on sale for $3,000 so $600 off right now. It's got the ALX aluminum frame full suspension and uh, it also has the chip here so you can slightly change the geometry angle it's got 150 millimeters in the front for travel 140 millimeters in the rear via the sr suntour shocks it's got a shimano ep6 uh, motor which delivers 85 newton meters or 250 watts of power 504 watt hour battery is included in the down tube it's got 29 inch wheels front and back but you can mullet it and put a 27 on the back it's got a 10 speed drivetrain, 203 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes, and the 170 millimeter dropper post, which is awesome if you're going down steep sections like, you know, in the trails or if you're on stairs or whatever, or if you're jumping the bike. Just downhill riding in general, I prefer to have the seat way down. Now, this bike is quite heavy, it weighs in at 52.5 pounds, uh, and this is the size large. Now, it's also got some really nice Schwabi. Hans Dampf tires. These things are 2.6 inch tires. They have unbelievable grip. I actually 
had these tires on my T8 and they are a little bit heavy as far as rolling goes, but when you have a power assist, it made absolutely no difference. So I didn't notice that at all. On my T8, I did notice these tires were a little bit harder to pedal just from the rolling resistance. But on this bike, they're absolutely perfect. I see no reason to change the tires, uh, just in case you're wondering. All right guys, so when it comes to charging, you just have to plug this you know, power brick into the wall. And then you have this end here, which is the one that plugs into the bike. Now, right here is the port. So it's got this nice rubber port here. So you always wanna make sure that this is on there securely, especially if you're riding in the wet. So you just lift this up and then you put this in this way, like this. So you're holding it this way, it goes in like this. And now this might take more effort than you might think. The first time I plugged this in, it took a lot of effort. Like I thought something was wrong. So just so you know, you really do have to like force it in. It's just a really tight fit. Um, the more I use it, it is getting a little bit easier. And now you can see it's charging. And that light will go out when it's fully charged. And it's also pretty hard to pull out when you're trying to unplug it as well. So just gotta wiggle it and eventually you'll get it out of there. And we'll just put this port thing back in there. It has this like little sleeve. You kind of got to fish in there like that. Boom. Good to go. All right, guys. So I just want to go over the controls here in the cockpit area. So what we have here is like the main controller unit, which basically just turns the bike on and off and it'll allow you to change your speeds and stuff. Go into the menu here. This is like menu access, this button there. Uh, there's also a button on the bottom here for a light, which I don't have on this bike. So there is a light option uh, for this particular module. Um, so you might be able to get that as an accessory. I'm not really sure, I didn't look into that. But this particular bike did not come with a light, so I'm just gonna ignore that. But just note that that's what that button is there. Now over here is the actual Shimano display screen. So this is like where you'll see all the information that you need to know. And you control everything on the screen with the controller over here. So all you gotta do is hold this button down power button and that will turn it on and you can see how it's turning on over here and right now you could notice on the bottom left it says off on the screen and that just means that the power assist is not doing anything so what i want to show you first is just how to set the time so if you just hold this button in the middle down here this is like the menu button if you hold this down it'll bring you into the menu and now if you look over here you can see we have clear clock and you would, this is where you would go to set the time. You just go in there. You got light, this will be options for the light. Brightness will control the brightness of this screen. Sometimes you might want that brighter or dimmer depending if you're riding at daytime or nighttime. Now unit, this is just you know miles versus kilometers. And language, you can select your language. And adjust doesn't do anything as far as I could tell. Assist profile, you can actually go in there and change different profiles if you want for your assist. But I find the profiles out of the box are actually really good, so I would ju just leave them as is. Display speed, now this is an interesting feature. Apparently you can plus or minus what the display speed is. I'm not sure why that's a feature, but it is what it is. Now if you go down here, that will exit you out. So if I hit that, I will exit. Now, if you press the bottom button here and hold it, it'll go into walk mode. As you can see here, it's blue. That's for walk. And now if you press this button, the bike will give just a, it'll give it like a little bit of juice and it'll actually assist the bike. You can actually hear it, like the bike's moving that little bit. It's, it's, it's running into the, uh, the wall in front of me, but that's the walk mode and it works really great. Now this is an excellent feature if you have to push this beast up a steep slippery hill, for example, because the bike weighs 52 pounds and you know, it's hard pushing bikes up really steep stuff as it is. So this feature makes it easy to walk the bike uphill. So that's really cool. Now, if you just hit this top button, you'll see it goes back to off. And now if you hit it again, it'll go into eco mode. 
And notice how the bar, you know, this blue section here is only a certain length. So it's like, you know, half the screen or so. When we go into trail mode, you could see how the bar now gets bigger, meaning more power, and it also changes the color. So you're gonna get more assist in trail mode than eco mode. Now, if you go into full-fledged boost mode, that's maximum power. So you're getting everything that this motor and battery has, and uh, it's the most assist that you can get. Now, up here on the top left, of course, is the battery life. Now, if you hit the menu button here once, this little button here in the middle, it'll bring you into some, you know, statistics and stuff. So you have battery life, you have range. So right now it's telling me I can go 29 miles in boost mode. So watch what happens when I change the mode. So I just hit this down button over here and you can see it switch from yellow to green. And now we have a green trail option here. That's what that means. So now it's saying we can go 44 miles, which makes sense. It's using way less battery power. And then if we go into eco mode, which is great for like rail trails and stuff like that, 87 miles we're going to get now in eco mode. And you can see the little blue bar over there. And uh, that's pretty much how that works. Now, if you cycle through, there's a couple other things. This is like your odometer here. Um, you got average speed, stuff like that. And if you press it one more time, here's just a couple more options like time and stuff like that. So how long you've been riding for. So you can go in and reset that if you want that to zero out. So that is the basics of how this works. So I'm just gonna hit this button right here to go back to the main screen. So pretty much what I do when I start riding is I turn the bike on and this is what it looks like when you first turn it on. Then I bump it up to eco mode if I'm riding on flat surfaces or something like that. And then if I'm gonna go into the trails and I want some assistance, I'm gonna hit it up on trail mode. Now you really only need trail mode for, you know, if you're going like slightly uphill and stuff like that, or if you're just really tired, because eco mode does do a pretty good job as far as assistance goes. But if you're getting tired and you wanna go faster or you're seeing like a, you know, like an uphill section coming, what I'll do is I'll bump it from eco mode into trail mode and that'll get me up that section. And then if I'm really, really tired or the section is ridiculously hard coming up, I'll just put it right into boost mode and go up it with maximum assistance. And that's pretty much how I like to ride. So this, you just use your thumb and you can control this as you ride and you just put the assist that you need, you know, as you see fit, it's, it's fantastic. So pedaling backwards does not push the drivetrain, which is interesting. I found this odd at first, but it's actually better from my experience because I have ha I've had my chain pop off many times while pedaling backwards on the trail. You know what I mean? When you're like anticipating like, you know, a, a turn or an upcoming like pedal strike situation, you pedal backwards, but sometimes you're going over bumps and the chain will come undone. It's happened on my T8, you know, quite a few times, you know, over the years, not that big of a deal. Um, but I find this is way better, so you don't even have to worry about that at all now. You can just have the pedals wherever you want, and it doesn't affect the drivetrain. That's a cool feature. It's like an upgrade that I just wasn't aware of, so cool. The first thing I wanted to test was the climbing abilities of the T6e. Because let's face it, climbing steep rocky hills is hard, and if you're out of shape like me, nearly impossible. I actually created a dedicated video on this hill climb test, but the bottom line is, I literally flew up the hill in trail mode and I didn't even break a sweat when I was like at the top. I was like a little warm, but it was a little chilly out. I didn't even sweat. So not only was it super fun going up the trail backwards uh, compared to going down, but the T6E really made it easy and smooth. This is a huge game changer for someone like me who would normally never ride up a downhill style trail. You know what I mean? Like I, I could probably barely make it up and at the end of the trail, I'll be shot, you know? so. Fantastic. All right, just got a few more turns here, and then there's one more, like, really steep climb right at the end, which I'm curious if the tires are gonna slip on. Let's find out. Here we go. That was not bad at all. Still have full battery power. Probably only took about five minutes to get up is unbelievable it's definitely a little bit winded but considering how out of shape i am it's not too bad pretty awesome view up here right so next i went into some regular trails and found the t6e to be an absolute blast you know having the extra power makes everything a bit more fun i'm finding every time i ride it 
I really like the ability to be able to accelerate quickly uh, before a jump or a hill. Wow, not sure if I was gonna make that. And, you know, and then also accelerating out of the turns, it's like having like a turbo, you know, in a car. Uh, I just, I just love that, it's awesome. Now when going downhill, the dropper post makes it really nice. You can get that seat all the way down here. So when you're standing up, you know, you could lean back, that seat's completely out of the way. Really like that feature. Now, a few questions I had that I now have answers for. Is the e-bike more fun to ride? Like, is it, you know, more fun having the assistance? Overall, for sure, I'm having more fun riding it with, with the, uh, the battery and the motor help. There's just no doubt about it. So does riding the e-bike make it harder to ride in some situations that matter? Now, yes, it does. Uh, mostly due to the weight and the power assist, like when pulling up on the front. If you pull up on the front handlebars when you're pedaling, the power assist makes that way easier. So that you have to get used to. Also, if you're just like coasting and you're going off like a small drop, uh, I did notice I had to pull up just a little bit harder because the bike is heavier, you know, but that's just, you just have to get used to the, the weight of the bike and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, the first time I tried to wheelie this thing, the front came up so quick, I had to like put my foot down, you know what I mean? Like the, the front, like it came up so fast, I wasn't expecting it to do that. So when you're wheeling, you kind of have to use a little bit of caution at first, but Obviously, it's way easier with the assist, but it comes up much quicker than you're used to. So on my T8, like I know exactly how much power I have to put in, you know, to get the front end up to ride a wheelie. You have to kind of relearn that with the e-bike. So as far as maintenance uh, compared to a regular mountain bike, there's really not much difference. You know, of course you have the battery and the motor, but there's no maintenance that you really do to the motor, uh, like there's not much to do there. The battery just stays in the frame. So one thing I heard is you don't want to leave the battery like fully charged if you're going to let it sit for a couple of weeks. You want to drain it down to like 80%. And another thing I heard, you don't want to leave it just plugged in all the time. So when it's fully charged, unplug it. And I think that'll let the battery last longer, like it'll give it more longevity um, for the recharge cycles. So as far as upgrades go, the only thing I changed was these grips. I put the Ergon GA3s on and I just like these grips much better. They give you more hand like pressure uh, dissipation and they're just, they're larger. I just, they're just much better grips in my opinion. I'm used to them on my TA. I've been using them a long time and I'm like very accustomed to these style grips now. So. I kind of feel like I have to have them when I ride, so it's personal preference, but I definitely really like these grips. Now, I did not feel the need to upgrade anything else. Like, the seat actually felt really good. My T8 seat was not very comfortable, the one that I got on my bike when it first came out. Um, but this one's way more comfortable. This is closer to my Ergon seat that I now have on my T8. The pedals are fine. They worked really well, other than these reflectors, which I don't like. The pedals themselves feel great, so I just left these on. I didn't even bother changing those, so we're good to go there. I must say I am blown away by the amount of assist the motor and battery actually provides. I did not expect it to be that much help, and it really is a tremendous game changer. Uh, so much fun. Brakes, the brakes on this bike are incredible. They work exceptionally well. They definitely work noticeably better than my T8 brakes, um, you know, just as a comparison. The suspension overall feels good, although it's definitely a bit harsher feeling than my T8 suspension. Now, you know, 
kind of makes sense that suspension costs more money. Um, I played with the suspension to get it dialed in as best I could. And here are the suspension settings I have for reference. Now, mind you, I'm six foot one tall and I weigh about 215 pounds. Now, you are gonna need a shock pump like this one, which I'll have linked below uh, in the video. And you're gonna have to adjust the pressure, air pressure in these shocks. Now, the front fork, I have 100 pounds of pressure in and the rear shock, I have 250 pounds of pressure in. Now the fork, I have the rebound set to eight clicks, and on the rear shock, I have the rebound set to six clicks, and I normally have the compression and dampening wide open. So I'll have that fully open unless I'm like cruising on the streets and I just don't want the suspension moving at all. But after I got the bike dialed in like that, it works really well it's you know supple enough it works overall like i said very good at medium speed it's excellent i mean it so soaks up everything that you would want it to soak up at higher speeds i do notice it's not quite as supple like i said as my t8 so at higher speeds i do i do feel a little bit less in control like when i'm going over crazy bumpy stuff like the suspension almost it just can't keep up um, like it's not as fast keeping up, I guess, is the best way to word it. I'm not like a suspension expert. I'm just telling you like how it feels from my perspective compared to my T8. So, you know, take that for what it is. Now, the suspension does matter. If you guys are coming from like hardcore bikes and you want to get an e-bike, you know, you're going to probably be a little bit disappointed in this suspension. However, if you're new to mountain bikes and you're looking at, you know what, let me get an e-bike instead of a regular mountain bike and you've never really ridden a full suspension mountain bike, you get something like this, you're gonna be absolutely blown away at how awesome the suspension is. It's like all relative, you know? Like once you drive like a BMW, you know what I mean? Like you kinda, it's hard to get into like a Civic or something. Um, it's kinda similar when it comes to suspension. So there's levels to the game, you know, it just is what it is. So I also tested the suspension on this cool uh, little Ninja kicker ramp that I got and it performed really well you know especially when i preloaded the suspension before i hit the ramp uh it really like gave you some nice pop and uh the landing was nice and smooth so i was impressed with the jumping off the ramp as well now going back to the weight this is significantly heavier than my t8 so that's noticeable you got the motor and the battery in there the thing where i notice it more than anything is when i'm trying to turn the bike really quick it's like slower to turn just due to the heavier weight not that big of a deal but you know, it, it just is what it is. I mean, do we really need e-bikes was, you know, one of the questions I had going into this. And physical fitness, guys, mountain bikes takes a tremendous amount of cardio. If you're not familiar, it's like ridiculous, especially where I ride. So the battery and motor really help take away some of that insane, out of shape, out of breath struggling uh, during those long, you know, climbs and stuff. And if you're not in shape, it's, it is torturous. And then when you're trying to go down, you're just tired. So, and time is money. If you only have an hour to ride, it's nice to know you can fly up the mountain in boost mode and get an awesome downhill run in without running, you know, running out the clock on the climbs and burning all those energy reserves. So you have your energy for the downhill fun. Imagine double the runs in the same amount of time. And let's face it, going down is usually, you know, way more fun than going up. So it really is bang for the buck, like fun wise, huge. So if loading and unloading the bike off a bike rack is hard for you, uh, this will be a little harder, especially if it's on your roof. You know, you got to lift this thing onto the roof. With that being said, the extra weight also makes the bike feel planted on the trail, yielding excellent traction and stability at speed on smooth trails. So it's like it, that weight does help in that regard. The controls and everything, guys, don't even worry about that. I, I already showed you how to use it, super easy. And you can also, there's an app you can get to update the bike and it's called eTube app. And I actually have a video on that. I'll have that linked below. If you wanna update the bike and make sure the software and firmwares are all up to date. So guys, these videos that I'm talking about, they'll be linked below and they're on my dedicated mountain bike channel, just to let you know, I have another YouTube channel uh, dedicated to mountain bikes. So my overall takeaway from this long-term Polygon T6 e-review are, with an e-bike, we can still have crazy fun, even though we are not in the greatest shape and are older in the 40s plus club like me. You know, and for a bonus, the assist will actually make you go even faster on the climbs and flats if you're in great shape. Downhill speed is not really gonna be different because you don't really need the motor for that. You're just kind of coasting for the most part going down. Now, when compared to my T8, I do notice the T6e weighing more than anything. 
The T8 is a bit more playful in the trails, and the suspension is noticeably more supple when hitting consecutive bumps at speed in particular. It's a bit easier to turn on the T8 quickly as well, but other than that, they handle very similar otherwise. Although I do prefer the larger brakes on the T6E for that extra stopping power with less effort. So at the end of the day, I am a huge fan of the e-bike and the Polygon T6E is a really great option for those just getting into mountain biking with a budget of around 3,600 US. For that price point, I can say that this bike performs incredible across the board. In a perfect world, I would like the suspension to be, you know, a little bit more like my T8, but that would cost a significant amount more in price. For example, the T7E, which is an upgrade from this bike, goes for 4,200 US, and it offers the next level suspension, motor, drivetrain, and brakes. So there you go. Like that would probably be a better option for something like for somebody like me, honestly. Then you have the Polygon Colossus N8E which goes for about $5,000, and that has even better suspension, brakes, and drivetrain. So for the hardcore mountain bikers, the N8E would probably be the best option. Now, the T6E would be ideal, in my opinion, for those looking for the best value full suspension e-bike to hit the trails fairly aggressively. The motor has plenty of power, the brakes work awesome, drivetrain works great, and the suspension does a great job overall, like, no doubt about it. All right, guys, that about wraps up this review. If you guys have any questions, please, by all means, below in the comment section, fire away. I'll try my best to help you out with any questions you might have about any of the Polygon bikes. I'm a big fan, as you know, my kid has one. Uh, Jace has a Polygon bike, and I have the, the uh, T8. I had the D6 before that, and now I'm borrowing this bike, the T6E, which I'm absolutely loving. All right, guys, don't forget all those other videos I talked about and my other YouTube channel will be linked below in the description area. And I'll also have links for like shock pumps and stuff like that if you guys are in the market for all the different mountain bike gear that I use. All that stuff will be linked below if you're interested uh, in the description area. So I appreciate it. If you can give me a thumbs up, it'd be super cool if you subscribe and I will catch up with you guys next time. Take care.